for now, Coach. They really are, and it's been a big factor here. Nobody a year ago, I think, would have guessed that all four top seeds would make this semifinal round because everybody expected there to be more upsets with shorter games. The other thing, of course, is Penn State being undefeated throughout the season, not losing a set. Nobody thought that was possible in 25-point games either. And a good start for Stanford in white with Luke Akinrado getting the kill against Texas in their burnt orange. Games are to 25, best three of five for a spot in the national championship on Saturday night. Senior Aaron Waller from Baldwin, Missouri will start it out. Coker, the freshman setter, looking for Julianne Fawcett, their sophomore outside hitter. Back to Akinrado, same play, same result. Big change from the last two times these met. These two teams met. Akinrado was having great difficulty connecting with either of the Stanford setters. Already two kills. She hit zero in that match at the beginning of the season. Both Akinrado and her uh, senior teammate Cynthia Barbosa spent last spring and summer training with the U.S. national team, and were alternates for the Olympic squad. Another back set to Faluka, popped up by the defense. Destiny Hooker out of the back at 6'4", just a tremendous athlete. Averaging four kills per set. Cassidy Lipman looking for Kleinman. Gets it by the block point, Stanford. We had a great angle of that coming right at us whenever Kleinman comes in. She loves to hit the angle, but one thing I was questioning Beth is I'm really surprised that Texas didn't start with Destiny Hooker in left front. They had her opposite serving and now they can't set her in the front row to get out of this rotation. Hooker coming out of the back, popped up by Akinrado. Now Barboza with the tip. Hooker's going to back set Ashley Engel. Lineman again. Hooker is there defensively. So many weapons for both sides. Handful of All-Americans that we'll be covering throughout the match. Including Ashley Engel getting the swing right there. Long extended rally. Barboza swinging out of the back no. Looks like she stepped on the line. You cannot do that out of the back row. Engel gets the kill for Texas to end that one. Heather Kistner, the 5'9 junior from Sugarland, Texas. She's wearing the different colored jersey as the libero, a defensive specialist and a serving specialist, cannot attack at the net. Kistner's replacing their four-year starter at that position, Allison Jennings from a year ago, and Fawcett dumps it over at the net point, Texas. Big shoes to fill for her, and also, of course, for their freshman setter, M Michelle Coker, who was replacing Michelle Moriarty, an All-American all setter for Texas. Done a really nice job keeping her poise this season. Fawcett rips it deep for the kill, and Karch Setters will be a big story in this one because you've got Coker, the freshman, on the Texas side, and then you've got Cassidy Lickman on the other side. They've only been setting the 5-1 system for the last th uh, third of the season. And in, in that last play, Fawcett going right over Lickman, but Lickman a very talented all-around volleyball, super high volleyball IQ, learning that set of position really well. You see Akinrado with her first mistake, but their connection has gained week by week through this season. Fast start by Stanford, countered now by the Texas attack as Kistner will serve with the lead here early in the first. Kleinman, look at how she maneuvered that right around the block for the kill. Couple for Alex Kleinman, the 6'4 sophomore from Manhattan Beach. She's been their leader in kills in each of her first two seasons on the farm. Former National High School Player of the Year out of Aracosta High. Hooker with the smash. Boy, that's an awesome sight coming down what we call hitting the pipe set, right down the middle of the court, right over Cynthia Barbosa, who's trying to help out on the block to no avail. Hooker is six feet four inches. She can touch 10 feet, 10 and a half inches, and Fawcett with the solo block on Akinrado. There's a couple of All-Americans going head to head. You can really see Fawcett seemingly playing with a lighter attitude. She's been way down for much of the season, having to pass in the back row for Texas. They finally gave up trying that. Starting off really well here. Can put all her attention towards blocking 
and hitting, and there's Fawcett again, off to a terrific start for Texas. She was the National Freshman of the Year last season, along with Stanford's Kleinman. They split most of the awards, and her numbers were just outrageous as a freshman. They've dropped off considerably her sophomore season. Her hitting percentage dropped over 70 points, I think weighed down by the extra responsibility of having to pass. So I think Texas made a wise decision not to have Fawcett involved in the back row, let her do her thing in the front, and it's paying off for Texas so far. The 6'2 sophomore from San Diego leading the charge here on an 8-1 run for Texas. Back in the semifinals for the first time in 13 years, will it be a storybook ending for the Horns? More on that when we come back. 8-4 Texas in the national semifinals. Each of the Longhorns has put together their own storybook throughout this NCAA tournament with all their themes, all their mantras for the year. On the front of all the books is the Texas, uh, the uh, tower on campus, which they always light up in burnt orange whenever they win a national championship. That's what they're looking for this year. It's been a real focus for Texas, but Coach Elliott talked about it yesterday at the press conference. He said, we want to do it the right way. We don't want to just be here and contend for this one year. We want to do it year after year, and he has been doing that constantly getting top two or three recruiting classes. Each player writes down some key words in their book before the match to help themselves prepare. And that was Ashley Engel's book that we saw, and her word for this match today was dominate. That's what she wrote in her book for the 88 national champs. Got a little peek in it yesterday. She said, hey, that's my <laughs> private journal, so we're not talking about those words. <laughs> Out of the timeout, Stanford able to bust up the rally as Faluka Akinrado, the 6'3 senior from Plantation, Florida, last year's National Player of the Year. And this year's will be announced tomorrow evening at the All-American Banquet. Will undoubtedly come from the, one of the uh, four teams that are here at the National Semifinals. Akinrado is a pretty good bet, as well as Nicole Fawcett, who was the Big Ten Player of the Year and one of the dominant forces for Penn State. you got about six All-Americans to choose from yeah. on that Penn State team. One of the things Stanford was talking about was trying to get Barbosa, who's a great left-side blocker, on Polini. We see that right here. Polini goes back. Barbosa was on her. Boy, Fawcett is off to a hot start. That's her fourth kill of the first set, 10-6 Stanford. And with no errors, Texas has got to be really happy. Coach Elliott said we have to have both our outside hitters going. More often than not, it's been Hooker, but Fawcett really coming out strong. Lickman over Okoba four contacts uh, called on Stanford. Well, Lickman, as she's trying to master the setting role, she said one of her problems is her middle hitters jump even higher in games than they do in practice. So she's still, try still trying to gauge that height. Akoba is a monster jumper, gets up so high. And so you see Lickman trying to allow her to hit with a straight, a straightened elbow where she can go right over the block. The 6-2 offense, which they ran early in the season, you've got a couple of setters out there. They s decided to switch to the 5-1. They went on a tear late in the season they've won 15 in a row nine of those Lickman has been the primary setter in their five well, it's, a, it's a little like playing in football with two quarterbacks it means each quarterback's only getting 50 percent of the snaps they don't get quite the rhythm so I think Stanford was wise later in the season playing the second time at UCLA they lost the first set went to the 5-1 been working since Aaron Waller gets it through the block the 6-1 senior he is uh, what John Dunning calls a gamer, has had some of her best matches late in the postseason, including an 18-kill performance in last year's loss in the finals. Barbosa digs it up, Kleinman. She's been the go-to early on for Stanford, five kills now for Alex. And you were talking about Erin Waller. She had to earn her starting job back, did a really nice job with it. it. It was a bit of a struggle for her, but she's gotten stronger. Coach Dunning really happy with the way she played. Great against Hawaii last weekend. Destiny Hooker soaring. Texas looking for a touch. They won't get one, the point to Stanford. And if things are on for Hooker, even Coach Rose of Penn State will say she can just render a block meaningless, null and void, go right over when you see her barrel in and get that top jump. Burris sliding behind off the mark, point Stanford. And they pull within one. And now it's Jared Elliott of Texas who will call the timeout. 
Cardinal coming right back after falling down early. And when we come back, the story of Gabby Ailes and her holiday homecoming.